ahead into this game. Let's see how these players do. Looks like players have maybe already altered their hands, or they they might be they're do, still altering their hands now. So <laughs> we keep talking about this all day long, but altering your hand is such a key part of Lorcana, and I think it's really interesting uh, to watch players see what they decide to keep, what they decide to discard and redraw, um, but really a key piece of the strategy in in Disney Lorcana. Absolutely, um, looking at our. Mm -hmm our players' hands. Um, you, you see kind of like the higher uninkables. You wonder if those are going to go through. Uh, looks like Jonathan has uh, three cards. Oh, he's rethinking. Rethinking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Edmund's still over here thinking about his hand. So Ruby Amethyst over on Edmund's side of the board, and then the Sapphire Steel deck, which, again, you said we are, have already seen at work. Yes. Jonathan has a really interesting build. He plays some cards, like you see that McDuck banner. You don't see that a whole lot in the Sapphire Steel. So what he does with it is really cool. Um, he also provides a captain for his Mr. Smee, which yes. you could see in there Hook as well. Smee. A nice early challenger, which you don't generally see uh, too prioritized in, in a, a Sapphire Steel matchup. Yeah. So on Edmund's side, I did spy an interesting card in his hand, and that is I saw the Ruby Pegasus hanging out over there, which is uh, not a card that you see often in a, a Ruby Amethyst build. It's a Pegasus is a 3-1 evasive character, and so it'll be really interesting to see how that comes into play on Edmund's side of the board. That is a really solid choice, especially if your opponent doesn't have much evasive because um, with that one, uh, but he has that three, so he can do so much mm -hmm. and and pretty pretty well defended just being evasive. Yes, and he's a great answer for something like a Diablo if you're playing against an Emerald deck. Um, so a nice little tech card into that deck. Absolutely. Now they're cutting, and um, it looks like a Jonathan is on the play. All right, so I feel like <laughs> I want to say that Ruby Amethyst is better in this matchup, but today we have seen this matchup multiple times, and Sapphire Steel has continued to come out on top. So I'm going to be really interested to see how this plays out. Yeah, I'm, I feel like a lot of it is going to be how Edmund's first few turns go. If he's able to create that board presence early, if he's able to be like a little aggressive to kind of get the lore on the board and is able to keep that momentum before Jonathan is able to build up what he needs to build up and kind of swoop in. And swoop in, which is exactly what a Sapphire Steel deck does. It definitely swoops in at the last moment. If this game goes long, it just gives Jonathan more of a chance to get out his big characters, get out things like the Lucky Dime, Tamatoa, and really close out the game very quickly. Unfortunately, it looks like Jonathan is not up to a fantastic start. He's missing a lot of those early ramp pieces into his hand, like his Popsicle, his potential one jump ahead or fishbone quill, whatever he, he was hoping uh, to play. Inking the McDuck Manor, and he does have the quill at least, so he will be able to put an extra card into his ink well um, and does have, have the four ink that's pretty on track, but we'll see. We will see. Yeah, fishbone quill is a fun card. I remember when this first card, when I first was learning how to play, and I was like, but then I'm taking cards out of my hand. You know, like, I'm losing right. cards. But with the strategy of the Sapphire Steel deck, it's, yeah, you're ramping up quickly, but then there's other tools like the Flavershim yeah. or playing Whole New World to refill your hand, and that Fishbone Quill really is was a key piece to this deck. It took me far too long to realize that you really need a card draw engine. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> In any deck. <laughs> In any deck. Which, and on Edmund's side of the board, you know, uh, Amethyst is known for being a really great card draw. There's just cards like you see there that he put into his inkwell friends on the other side, but you also have the Queen's Castle, which can be really great for drawing cards. You have the rabbit that you can bounce back and forth. So there are a lot of options on Edmund's side of the board if he can find them. And we did see him also just spend his three ink that he had in the inkwell to play friends on the other side to draw too, which I think is really great because it he <laughs> hasn't unfortunately found some other cards that you would like to see in a Ruby Amethyst deck like the Flynn and the Sisu 
come down. Um, so trying to get some more options. And since Jonathan doesn't didn't have anything on the board yet, I think he felt safe to play the friends on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jonathan playing the Hiram Flavisham. Speaking of card draw engines, he was mm -hmm. able to um, draw some cards after discarding the Fishbone Quill and was able to play Mr. Smee, which is a great little aggressor in, in, into this deck. And we have a goat coming down. I love the goats. Uh, back to Flavisham, though. I know. I happen to know that Great Mouse Detective is one of your favorite Disney movies. I do love the Great <laughs> Mouse Detective. It's fabulous. I love seeing all of it. Um, I saw in, 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 in Jonathan's previous game, he is... I has a different mouse detective. In oh. It. <laughs> Mickey. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Jonathan having a very wide board very early in this game, uh, just kind of showing what an adaptable player he is. He has the Mr. Smee, like we mentioned, but he has uh, Captain Hook, which is a nice challenger yes. three. He protects Mr. Smee from getting that um, minus one willpower each turn and playing, uh, getting Tinkerbell Giant Fairy out on the board, which is beautiful, doing a, a damage there on the Merlin Goat, but she is definitely a threat. Yes, a beautiful card as far as the art goes and a beautiful in the damage that she is able to do. And we see a Sisu come down, which is a card that we continue to see and is such a fabulous card, along with that evasive Pegasus like we saw. Um, it looks like Edmund is sitting at five ink right now. And <laughs> that board on the other side, Jonathan's side, is looking very wide. Oh, my. Okay. Oh so Jonathan just played Chin Po, who is a beautiful bodyguard. Beautiful bodyguard. He <laughs> does a very good job at what he He has a seven willpower, which is huge. Um, so to get to any of the rest of Jonathan's board, Edwin is going to have to pull through that Chin Po, which is... Uh, it's a big task. <laughs> is a that is a large body that he has to get through. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And yeah, he did have that be prepared in hand. Edmund did, but that because of that whole new world, which Jonathan used Tinkerbell to sing, um, he had to say goodbye to that be prepared in his hand. So hopefully he drew into another one or found some other answers because Jonathan's board state right now is pretty incredible. Yeah, he's a, he's in a really, really good position. Edmund has a lot. I mean, if you compare the two uh, decks, you know, in terms of doing a board wipe, Edmund is definitely in the better position. But Jonathan feels pretty confident, you know, questing with with everybody on his side of, a bo of the board, which, you know, seven lore there yeah and you know Edmund still is only at five ink so he's still turn well you know this turn and then the, he couldn't play be prepared until next turn and even if he had it so I mean he has options for single character removal mm -hmm. if he's able to get a Madame Medusa mm -hmm. or even a Lady Tremaine out I don't know if he's running brawl might be able to pick off little guys but yeah uh, um yeah he's he's definitely on the back foot which I did not expect for at this point in this match no and I, like we talked about at the beginning of the game with Ruby Amethyst you really do kind of want to get an early lead and Edmund was not able to do that in this game and taking two of his characters to take out that large bodyguard yes. and then run. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, both of us. Okay. <laughs> no, that was, that was fantastic with Edmund. Took out the Chimpeo, was able to take out Tinkerbell Giant Fairy and then dropping the Maui to take out the Hiram Flavorsham, which is a big deal because that's, that's our card draw engine. Mm -hmm. um, so now it's just the captain and his first mate. That was, that was excellent on Edmund's side. Yeah, being able to take care of three characters there. He did have to lose, you know, uh, his characters to do it. But, and another Tinkerbell. Why not? Fabulous. So, <laughs> Jonathan's able to, to take oh, out the Maui. no. Dropping the There it is. I love <laughs> the McDuck Manor. It's excellent. <laughs> it has that nine body Quest for two. I mean, you could put characters on it for one, but I mean, you don't get any benefit. It's just a very large mansion sitting in the middle of your field. It can hold so many ducks. So and, many ducks. And it, <laughs> and it can protect. So It's a fortress. It is. <laughs> McDuck Manor is definitely a fortress. Oh, my goodness. And Edmund... I mean, that nine willpower does not really have... He's digging here. You know, he had that rabbit bouncing it back with Madden Man Fox. He's looking for some answers. Uh, we're still 
early in the game, I mean, in lore totals, we're of quite a few turns. We have quite a lot of ink in the ink well. But Jonathan is at eight. Edmund is at four. So there's still a lot of game left to play. And Edmund still has time to find some answers. But we know that these Sapphire Steel decks can swing so quickly. So he does need to find them sooner rather than later. I mean, we saw Edmund take out that very full board. He mm -hmm. made a lot of damage. He knows what the moves are that he needs to be doing. He knows his deck. He knows his cards. I mean, that's why he's, you know, Fort Worth champion. He, yes. <laughs> so if, if if there is a way for him to pull ahead, he's going to do it. Yes. Yeah. I'm not, I can't see what's in his hand. If he, I, th I think I saw a Queen's Castle in there. Oh, Gaston. This is a card that we've seen a few times today, and I just love this Gaston. The art just makes me happy every time <laughs> I see it. <laughs> and it allows Jonathan to filter through some cards in his deck. And, uh, oh, well, there we go. He let it go. Right? Let it go. Yeah, I was waiting. Go. There. <laughs> Beautiful. Was, yeah. I mean, let it go is such a great card. You get to, you can sing it so you don't have to use the ink in your inkwell. And oh. Edmund said uh, that was the writing on the wall for me. Absolutely. And yeah. conceded there. He had the 8 ink. I did not have to be prepared, so it was... No. So Jonathan is going to be uh, on the draw this time. He went first last time, so Edmund will get to go first here. It looks like they are still finishing altering their hands. We had did have a Flynn in there. You got to be prepared, ah, which is, I mean, you really don't want that sitting in your hand from turn one. Yeah, it looks like Edmund altered five cards there, and Jonathan uh, did three. Hopefully, Jonathan was able to find some of the early uh, ramp cards, some popsicles. He didn't have uh, any popsicles or fortispheres last game. No, we, early. Did, we didn't see them that for that early one drop. And Edmund, uh, we saw the Sisu. I don't think he ever drew a flood. He didn't, but I think I saw one in his hand this time around. So hopefully he can really be a little bit more aggressive going into this next game. He'll be on the play, which is good for him, and, and start to Get, get, gain that lore very early and keep Jonathan on his toes. Absolutely. A, a first drop is the magic broom. So if he plays another character, that can be banished to draw a card. What's so interesting about, you know, Sapphire Steel is it really does want to get the ramp going early and you don't always see a lot of characters played for the first one, two, even three turns. You see a lot right. of items or ramp cards. And so if Edmund is able in those first few turns to really get some cards down here, like that Flynn front of me that we see here, the Sisu, and really start um, gaining lore early, that's going to be key. Oh, oh nice. That. Jonathan pulling the Argus. <laughs> He's Quite a little uh, strong, strong guy there yeah. doing with four strength. Because I was wondering, I was like, I don't know what Jonathan will have to possibly uh, outscale the Sisu, but yep. we got ours is there. He's, yep. He's a titan. He is. <laughs> He's ready to do some damage. Yeah. Jonathan said, not that way, this yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, yeah, he bounced back. Uh, the Flynn because he's not doing any good. He's just sitting there on the board, putting yeah. putting Mad and Mim out. Very much a, we'll try again later. We'll try again <laughs> later. <laughs> Please call that. It's like a magic eight ball. Yes. yes. <laughs> try again. Jonathan, another key piece of his deck, getting that fishbone quill out, so he'll be able to start scaling nicely. I oh, that it Chen Po is in his hand. It is, and it looks like he has two, two Tinkerbells. Tinker Bells and uh, a whole new world and uh, grab your swords. So. I mean, that's a nice hand right there. That's <laughs> a beautiful <laughs> hand. I would be very happy with that hand. Absolutely, <laughs> and because he's scaling so quickly, he's. I mean, he, he'll be able to, to bring out, you know, Shimpo next turn. Yeah, we got Flynn going into the inkwell, and we have that rabbit, which is uh, nice here. Hopefully, he can get that rabbit bouncing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Singing friends on the other side. Hopefully, his friends on the other side help him out here. Absolutely. See, see where the real friends are. Yes. <laughs> the cards. The cards. Are they what we need? Are they the answers that we need? Yeah. Jonathan inking uh, a second uh, Cogsworth grandfather clock. Um, I'm interested to see what he plays here because he does have uh, the Grab Your Swords. He also has the Chin Po. And 
I'm interested to see. And uh, Argus is a two-cost character, correct? Yes. So, yeah, this is interesting because, yeah, I, the grab your swords doesn't do wouldn't take care of anything on Edmund's side of the board. You could play Whole New World, but you can't sing it right now. Right. Um, so, do you play Chin Po? Tinkerbell. Or do you play a Tinkerbell? Even better. Get that extra ink in the hand and drop that Tinkerbell doing one damage across. Uh, yes, that's excellent. I'm so glad that they made Tinkerbell into a play mat. Oh, yes, because that was everyone's favorite art. And if you look really closely at the little boat, there's a tiny Mr. Smee. Mr. Smee. And yes. you see the lost boys on the cliff and, like, just being able to see that art big is just so <laughs> good. So good. It's so good. Yeah. Ah, there's our Queen's Castle. And Beautiful. Also paying one ink to move the fox over there. And the Queen's Castle is my favorite location. Seven willpower, gains two lore at the start of your turn, and then you get the card draw for every character on there. And it's just so... So good. I've seen games won with castles. And Jonathan, I don't know. I know you've seen his deck in a previous round. Steel does have some good answers for locations, but does Jonathan have the answers for it in his deck? Uh, we will see because uh, we have the Along Cave Zeus, and mm -hmm. then we also have Rise of the Titans, which yes. I can't remember if he is playing or not. Okay. Um, but Chien Po. The big guy comes big down. Guy. <laughs> Shen po, of course, if people don't know, is one of the side characters in Mulan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just love all those side characters. They're, they're so fun. I and love Shen po. He is such a, a gentle giant. He is. Just, just absolutely wonderful. Everyone should have a best friend like Shen po. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. So we got whole new hands here for both players. It looks mm -hmm. like we've got a... Uh, Sisu over on Edmund's side, that big Sisu, the Floodborn, yes. uh, which is a fabulous card. And it looks like he was forced to discard that Be Prepared. <laughs> Again. So oh, an another wow. really good timing by Jonathan on yeah. that whole new world. Yes, a whole new world is definitely one of the strongest cards in the game and really disrupts your opponent. And especially when you're playing a deck like Jonathan's where you can control where, when and where you play it. Yes. Fabulous. I also, uh, Jonathan is running Fire the Cannons, which you don't see very often anymore. Becky, tell me how you feel about Fire the Cannons. I have been against <laughs> Fire the Cannons. <laughs> no, I just hate being against Fire the Cannons. Sure, sure. As somebody who likes to play aggro decks with little guys, um, Fire the Cannons is the detriment to little guys everywhere. Yes. Okay, we saw a Sisu come down along with the magic broom. Oh. I think I missed what happened. So I think that Captain Hook challenged into something there. Oh, did he played grab your swords. I missed that. So he yeah. played grab your swords. Uh, doing two to everything. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, so Edmund was... <laughs> Starting to build his board state up, and then Jonathan just said, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Sorry I distracted you with my <laughs> the, the fire the cannons tirade. <laughs> I, I can't help it. That's just who I am. Uh, okay, so now, once again, Jonathan with a very full board dropping the McDuck oh, Manor. My um, a lot happening, and with that giant chin po body and the giant mcduck banner body it's just beautiful and even <sighs> if edmund is able to pull out a a be prepared mcduck manor stays on the board survives yeah i don't think i see be prepared in his hand uh oh how so oh okay. there is the be prepared yes. okay yes so he did put three damage onto McDuck Manor, yes. which I think is smart there. Yes. Wiping the board. And then now, hopefully, now if you bring in something like a Maui, which Edmund definitely has in his deck, then he could take out McDuck Manor with just that one card. But Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's this definitely feels like a little bit of a reset here. We have both players sitting at five lore. Um, Jonathan right now having the advantage, though, with that McDuck Manor on board. Yes, and we'll see if Jonathan's able to pull out a nice big board again, though he seems to be doing it fairly well, um, um, fairly consistently. Yep. 
Jonathan taking a look through Edmund's discard, which if you're a newer player, if you don't know, the discard pile is public information. So oftentimes you'll see players ask to see their opponent's discard piles to look through. And what they're looking for is um, like how many copies of Be Prepared have I seen so far yeah. or, or whatnot, because then you can kind of do by process of elimination um, know what else might be still waiting in the wings to be played. Absolutely. Um, Jonathan uh, doing a whole new world, re restocking his hand. He has so much ink, Rebecca. He does. So, so much. He can play whatever <laughs> he wants. My son was playing a Sapphire Steel deck. We were playing at home the other day, and he had so much ink, and he's like, I just, he's like, I can't control all this ink over here. I was like, poor you. Yeah, right? <laughs> all that ink. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we're getting a, a Captain Hook out there. Uh, but yeah, hold on, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that 10? 11? Three. Oh, <laughs> uh, in ink? Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's quite a lot. Yeah. So I guess he does definitely have the resources to keep building uh, his board up. And it's kind of become Edmund's uh, to stop him at starting yeah. right now with the Madame Medusa. Yep. I love these ladies in chairs. Madame Medusa, of course, being able to banish chosen opposing character that has three cost or less. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, Gaston, which now there's another one, not able to be chosen by Madame Medusa because he has that for strength. Yes. Um, and just, I mean, two is two j smart Gastons. It's terrifying. <laughs> so ter I mean, uh, Gaston is, you can deal with, but smart Gaston? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> At least he thinks he's smart, but having yeah. two of them and he quests for three, plus yeah. he has that McDuck Manor over here. Yeah. He's still, uh, Jonathan is, is still having a, a very, again, I, I know I keep saying this, but this Sapphire Steel, like having these aggressive cards and that you don't see like a whole lot is just so cool. Like I am loving what he is doing here. Yep. yep. Oh, and we just played a let it go to say goodbye to Madame Medusa. Yes. And Edmund had to let go of Madame Medusa into his inkwell, which is really unfortunate. And Jonathan now questing and up to 10 he lore. has 10 he has game on board with his 10 lore so um, it's up to Edmund to stop this and <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I know that Edmund for sure had to be prepared and there's the Maui coming okay. down to take care of McDuck so right. which then Edmund survives to live at least one more turn. Um, but Absolutely. I know there were two be prepared in his discard, and there may have even been three. And I, a lot of players will only run three be prepared. So yes. it's possible that he might not have any more. Oh, and yeah. Edmund says, there's nothing else I can there's do. Not. That was epic. <laughs> that was epic. This 